I have done a lot of one week experiments this year, but is one week enough? Did I have any long term takeaway benefits from any of these experiments? Yes, I did. As I work on producing another one week experiment right now for you guys that will hopefully come out for you next Saturday, let's dive into this video right here where I cover all the experiments we've done so far and the ones that have left me with physical benefits, both body composition and performance, also mental benefits as well. Pay attention, it's gonna be an interesting video. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched any of the experiments, I suggest you go back and watch them. With that being said, let's dive in, but you gotta focus. So going all the way back to January with the first experiment, breathing through the nose, only trying to breathe through the nose for the entire week. Did I get any takeaway benefits from this? Absolutely yes. Just really focusing breathing through the nose for an entire week, as challenging as it was, really has left me being way more of a nose breather now than I ever have been before. Yes, I do still breathe through my mouth occasionally here and there, but it's like built in my subconscious now. Man, I'm breathing through my mouth, then I close it. I feel like my nose starts to open back up and it's just a lot more effortless. There have been a ton of arguments that that is actually how we are supposed to breathe and it makes sense to me. So even just like mental cognitive clarity improves over time by breathing through the nose. Next video, we tried to get hyper flexible in only one week. Now, why I did put on some serious flexibility from that video, I did not keep that flexibility. In fact, my flexibility practice has kind of been off recently. If I wanted to do that, I would have had to maintain that flexibility at least every other day in my opinion to just keep that amount of bend I got basically. Moving to February, vegan for a week. Did I have any long-term takeaway benefits from this video? Pretty much neutral on this one. No lasting benefits, no lasting negatives. One thing I did reinforce though that I already knew is if you're gonna eat vegan, you can eat vegan and not be healthy. There are a ton of unhealthy vegan foods. And I ran into that problem in that video. I just wanted some of these vegan muffins. I ate the whole thing, felt like crap. But with that being said, there are a ton of healthy vegan foods that if you dive into those health foods, I mean, hey, you feel healthy, you feel great. Moving on to the slack line experiment. It really challenged the body with balance in a whole new way. Very fun. I don't think I kept any balance benefits from that, but maybe I did. I don't know. I feel like I do know what it feels like to step on a slack line, but I'm certain it would take me a little bit to get used to slack landing again. You know what I mean? Training only one side of the body at a time. This was an interesting one. Some great lessons learned from this video, but when it comes to physical benefits that have lasted since this video, nothing, but I really haven't kept up with only training one side of my body at a time, even here and there. I kind of said I would in that video, but I just haven't. Okay, we've been busy with all these other experiments. Moving on to May, we're running into some where I have taken away some exercises from these videos and have utilized them in my daily training and they've been benefited me greatly. The first one, F1 neck training. Huge takeaway point from this video was it doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be expensive. Simple isometric training with a resistance band and or just using your body weight to train for that neck strength absolutely effective and super easy to add into any workout for growing that neck girth strength stability posture, etc. Very important takeaway points from this video. 1,000 jump ropes a day trying to grow those calves. When we first did this experiment, my right calf was only 15 centimeter, centimeter, bro, 15 inches in diameter and my left was 14.75. And then we actually did put on some girth to the calves. But if you jump all the way up until August when we took our measurements for the before occlusion band training videos, it was back down to 15 and 15 on both. But if I do take my calf measurements right now, it is still about 15, but it's a tight 15. You could argue it's somewhere in between 15 and 15.25. So it looks like we may have broken past the 14 inch barrier, at least for now. And maybe this helped us get there. It is not certain. Next video, barefoot for a week, huge takeaway points from this video. When it comes to foot strength, stability, just overall like well-being, there is so much that can be learned with your body by going barefoot on the earth rather than wearing all these comfy, fluffy shoes. This experiment, I absolutely love. My foot got stronger. I felt like my overall connectivity got stronger and what I've learned has stuck with me since that video. Check that video out. Yo, okay, interesting. Moving on to June, sauna suit for a week. Now you might be thinking, oh, that's a silly experiment, sauna suit for a week. Yes, we had some results at the end of that. We didn't necessarily get to keep those results, obviously, but something very interesting that I took away from this video is my 
my acclimation to heat seemed to go up extremely. Like when it's literally 80 degrees out, like I'm actually just kind of like, yeah, like I'll even keep my sweatshirt on, I'll run with my sweatshirt, etc. Like I can handle the heat like a boss and that has stuck with me ever since this video, which is gonna be bad when it turns the winter red light therapy. I'm not gonna give too much away right now because I wanna make a follow-up video on this. I wanna do like a 90 day follow-up video actually. So that'll be in September sometime, maybe towards the end of September. Let's just say I have been continuing to do red light therapy ever since this experiment. It's interesting. Like I was a super skeptic at first, but there are some interesting things just about it when it comes to making you feel better. And I'll get to that in the follow-up video in 90 days. The inversion table, no huge takeaway points from this video. I'm sorry, any inversion freaks out there, but for me, inversion, it just, it just wasn't, you know? But watch the video, we did gain a little bit of height. Obviously, it was only temporary, right? Don't freak out with me, scientists. Flexing for one hour a day, this was grueling. But at the end of it, I do still feel like I can make better mind muscle connection with my whole entire upper body, specifically my shoulders and even my legs, something I wasn't good at flexing before. And it was a very challenging and grueling experience flexing for an hour. It was exhausting. So check that out. It's, it's a good one. Altitude mask for a week. Did we keep those cardiovascular gains we made from this experiment? So it has been a couple of weeks since we have not worn the altitude mask at all. And I just tested my mile out again, not running any more than I was before, not changing anything up. My mile time is in between the before and after mile time of that experiment. So to me, it looks like we didn't keep all of the cardiovascular gains, but we still kept some. And if I would probably throw that thing back on, we'd probably get those results back fairly quickly. And then maybe we could even break through that plateau. A very interesting video, a ton of other takeaway points, challenges from that video that you can learn and see in the video. Check that out. Next video, occlusion band training. While I didn't think the occlusion band training gave me any new like like veins all of a sudden in my arm, like, oh yeah, look at that new vein right there. I've been working on that for a week. I did feel like it taught me some new things about training. And one of those things I am actually currently doing in, ex in an experiment right now. And hopefully that's gonna be up next week. And finally, bigger hands in 10 days. This is probably one of the, if not the most time I've ever spent on a challenge video. From the pre-planning, production, just making sure everything was right. So hopefully it was entertaining, informative, and it just could tie together some new ideas that no one really talks about in the fitness world. And that all revolves around just getting gritty. You know, I said that word like a million times, you guys made fun of me in the video. But with that being said, at the end of the video, yes, the hands got bigger. My hands got bigger. But there have also been some secondary takeaway points that I have not covered in this video. One of those is grip strength. I have noticed my grip strength since that video has been significantly increased. For example, on Captains of Crush, the 1.5, I know my grip isn't that strong, but the 1.5, I used to be able to close it, but just tap it, you know? Literally now after this experiment, after doing the bigger hands experiment, I can crush close that thing and just hold it there for up to 10 seconds or more on both hands. And now my goal is to be able to get to a two, close the two and hold it. So I'm working on my grip strength now through working on this bigger hand training because yes, I am planning to refine this bigger hand training and make a follow-up video where I try to grow my hands even bigger. I'm thinking for 30, 60, or 90 days. And I'm also hoping that from everything I learned by doing this 10-day experiment of trying to grow my hands, maybe I can write or make like a guide or a program or like a fun book where I put together all of these ideas and like share just the techniques you know, getting gritty. I think it's gonna be super cool. So I'm hoping by late September, I'll have a video, a follow-up video on doing this bigger hand training for 30 days and really just refining these techniques. I'm so excited about that. Huge takeaway points from that experiment. Check that video out. It is absolutely insane. Probably one of my best videos of all time. And that's where we are right now. Now, I know I have done a ton of other one-week experiments from the previous year. If there's anything you're wondering from any of those videos or from any of these 
these videos I covered, leave me a comment. Heck, leave a comment no matter what. Don't forget to subscribe, turn those notifications on. If you're interested in my bodyweight training program, Bodyweight Beast 2.0, go to onlykindsfitness.com. Check that out, tons of great feedback on that. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.